I am so glad for this talk and for Karen and Leticia to, uh, to do this talk. I'm not gonna introduce the two of you because you're so accomplished that I can't fit it into like a minute. Um, so I'm gonna let you introduce yourself um, and I want to welcome everyone to Barbie's Dream House. Hello, my name is Leticia Avro. I fell in love with Postgres in 2007 when I was asked to write an extension to Postgres, able to find a French tone name, even if it's misspelled. And if you studied a little French, you will understand how difficult it is. I have several hats as I'm a committed Postgres community member. I'm a board member of PostgreSQL Europe, the founder of Postgres Women, and a recognized Postgres contributor. I'm also a field CTO working for EDB. Field CTO means I do all the techy, interesting part of the CTO job without all the boring administration stuff. And finally, I'm a university teacher teaching Postgres and databases at the University of Lyon in France. And I'm Karen Jex. I started my tech career 25 years ago, and I spent most of that time as a database administrator before becoming a database consultant, and I'm now a senior solutions architect at Crunchy Data. And I'm a woman. <laughs> I don't usually include that piece of information when I introduce myself, because I don't think it's particularly relevant to the job that I do or to the talks that I give, but for this talk, it's a bit different. Uh, oh, and don't mind the blonde guy, he's just Ken. We're here to talk about what it's like for women in tech, but before we begin, I'd like to make a little disclaimer. This is a sociology talk, and uh, in sociology, it's enough if it's true for the majority of cases to make it a truth. So, because it's based on statistics. So if you happen to think, but I'm not that way, I'm not behaving like that, and so on, and it will happen because we're all human beings here and it will happen to everyone. Happens to me, happens to Karen, whatever. Remember, it's all about statistics. Also, we talk about the IT world because that's the one we know, but it's not the worst domain where sexism happens. Taking inspiration from Barbie, the most popular movie of 2023, we unravel the challenging journey of women navigating a male-dominated tech world. We'll share real-life examples of gender bias and sometimes overt sexism, although names have been changed to protect identities, giving insights into the persistent hurdles that women encounter. We hope to create awareness, encourage reflection, and inspire action to create a more inclusive and equitable IT landscape for everyone. Join us for an eye-opening exploration that paves the way for meaningful change in Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House. <laughs> much as it's fun to dress up and do something a bit different, I'd actually be much more comfortable up here giving a tech talk. So why are we doing this? The Barbie movie was eye-opening to me. I didn't learn anything about patriarchy or feminism in this film. Those notions are quite obvious to me, but I thought that the vast majority of the population was not aware of that. I've seen a lot of talk about the lack of women, of women in IT and trying to explain why. The Barbie movie made me realize we had to explain what women are facing on a day-to-day -day basis so others can understand how tiresome it can be. Life's hard as a woman in tech. I've been in the industry for 25 years and I absolutely love the work I do, but I'm exhausted and I'm angry and I'm sad that I haven't been able to do more to change things for the women who are still, fortunately for all of us, coming in behind me. I still often feel like an outsider after all this time. Conference lineups still in 2023 with all male presenters don't help me to feel welcome in the only industry I've ever known and the only career I've ever wanted to pursue. And just a note to the event that felt the need to invent two female speakers to give the impression of a more diverse lineup, no, that doesn't help. Women are underrepresented in tech. In 2022, women occupied only 20% of all tech roles across European companies. This is even more evident in certain areas of tech, for example, in open source projects such as Postgres. Of the 96 people listed as contributors to the project, only four are women. Of the 41 major contributors, only two are women. The core team is composed of seven members, all male old men, and I'd like to add that they are white too. 
There has never been a woman in the core team, and the new core team members are appointed by existing core team members. Our very own Leticia, of course, is one of those contributors. Don't make me blush. <laughs> There's a tech talent gap. It's estimated to reach between 1.4 and 3.9 million people by 2027 for the EU 27 countries. This could potentially be closed by doubling the share of women in the tech workforce. But the share of women in tech is lowest in the areas that are increasing, that are growing the fastest, such as cloud and DevOps, which means that the share of women in tech roles in Europe is actually heading towards a decline to 21% by 2027. Women in tech experience gender bias or discrimination in the workplace, for example, reported by a staggering 76% of respondents to a 2023 Women in Tech survey. Let's try a bit of audience participation to illustrate the scale of the issue. If you're willing to share, please raise your hand if you're one of the small men who has experienced discrimination in the workplace. We're sorry you've experienced that. We hear you and thank you for sharing. Women in tech are paid less than their male counterparts. In the UK, for example, the tech industry gender pay gap is 16%, which is higher than the national average of 11.6%. Diversity has been proven to be good for everyone. It enhances creativity, leads to better business decisions, and even increases productivity and profitability. So why did we decide to base the talk on the Barbie movie? Barbie is an unlikely ally, but when the film came out earlier this year, it seemed to resonate with so many women. There might not be anything new or groundbreaking in the actual message, but the film says out loud what so many of us think and feel and presents it to the world in a fun, accessible way. And we hope to do the same in this talk. At the beginning of the film, we are introduced to stereotypical Barbie, played by Margot Robbie, and her fellow dolls who are living happily in Barbie land. In this matriarchal society, the Barbies hold prestigious jobs such as doctor, lawyer, and politician, while the Kens do beach. <laughs> the Barbies live blissfully in a bubble where the problems encountered by women in the real world just don't exist. Some girls are fortunate enough to be brought up hearing the message that they can do anything they want and be anything they want. In fact, according to standardized science and math tests conducted in dif at different age levels across multiple European countries, girls perform as well as or slightly better than boys in science, technology, engineering, and math, also called STEM, subjects during primary and secondary education. Alice, one of the women who shared their stories with us, said, I went to a progressive all-girls school where we were constantly told that girls can do anything, but that it was a shock to the system when she realized later that things weren't always so simple. Things aren't idyllic for all the Barbies. Weird Barbie, for example, is a Barbie who was played with a little too roughly. She lives in her weird dream house and is treated as an outcast by others, bar other Barbies. It's an uncomfortable truth that women aren't always kind to other women. We expect that women who become successful in tech will want to offer help, support, and guidance to younger women colleagues, and that they'll want to challenge the status quo and make things better. Unfortunately, this isn't necessarily the case. All of us, even women, are sexist because we are raised in a sexist world. The Harvard University implicit bias tests are a good way to become aware of our own unconscious sexism or other bias. The results can be quite surprising. We may think we don't subscribe to gender stereotype, but we found out that we, like many people, associate males more with science and career and female more with art and family. There's a behavior known as the queen bee phenomenon, where women leaders assimilate into male-dominated organizations by distancing themselves from junior women and legitimizing gender inequality in their organization. This is explained as a response to the discrimination and social identity threat that women may experience in male-dominated organizations. And it's not a typically feminine response, but part of a general self-group distancing response that's also found in other marginalized groups. In less academic terms, think mean girls. 
We obviously need women to support other women. A great sentiment here is, you can't compete with me. I want you to win too. Although this talks specifically about what it's like to be a woman in tech, and a lot of the experiences we describe here are universal to all women, it's really important for us to acknowledge that we're speaking from a position of privilege. Women who also belong to other underrepresented or oppressed groups, for example, with disability, women with disabilities or women of color can face discrimination related to each of these identities and therefore will often face additional struggle. Also, although we mainly use the words women and men in this talk, we're aware that these issues also impact people with other gender identities. This fight has to be for all of us. And this was the slide I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <sighs> One evening, while dancing with her friends as usual, Barbie suddenly experiences thoughts about mortality. Overnight, she develops bad breath, cellulite, and flat feet, making her day slightly less than perfect for the first time ever. She turns to Weird Barbie for advice, who tells her that to fix things, she needs to go to the real world and find the child playing with her. Barbie sets off on a long journey in her convertible, only to find that Ken has stood away and insists on joining her. Barbie initially says no, but eventually agrees. That's surely a metaphor for women not feeling able to set boundaries and to say no in the workplace. Instead of leaving Babylon to head to the real world, girls are turning their back on STEM subjects and women are leaving their tech roles in droves. Despite the fact that girls perform as well as boys in STEM subjects at school, there's a significant drop off, 18 percentage points, in girls going into STEM disciplines when they go to university. The drop is even higher, 31% when you take the, into account just ICT, information science, computer science, and technology. There's also a small but steady decline in women's STEM graduates over time, one to two percentage points from 2016 to 2020. Some of the reasons for this drop-off are, secondary school girls get significantly less teacher, parental, and peer support than boys to do for pursuing STEM careers. Girls are told that they aren't good at STEM, often communicated in subtle but debilitating behaviours, such as teachers in STEM classes calling on boys more than girls. With only 19% of ICT bachelor students being women, the resulting isolation is often another reason women drop out of those classes. There's a second, dispiriting and significant drop-off in the percentage of women who transition into tech roles after graduation. Only 23% of women STEM majors end up in computer science-related roles compared to 44% of men. Although, not the focus of this talk, we also have to acknowledge that there are critical basic needs that prevent girls from achieving educational goals in many countries around the world. Many adolescent girls do not attend school during menstruation, for example, because of lack of adequate sanitation, cultural taboo, stigma, or access to pain medication. One of my friends, Ulimatu, uh, who was raised in Conakry, Guinea, experienced a drop in the proportion of girls in her school from 30% to 20% between 6th and 7th grade. This was due to them getting married during the summer of their 12th birthday. According to a 2022 Women in Tech article, over half of women, exactly 56%, leave the tech industry 10 to 20 years into their career, which is double the rate of men. Some of the reasons that women are leaving their tech roles are... Few opportunities for progression or the glass ceiling. In the UK, women hold 32.8% of entry-level positions in computer science-related jobs. Just 22% of tech directors are women, and just 10.9% in CEO or senior leadership roles. However, as many as 68% of men in tech believe women have equal progression opportunities, and 35% of men believe that there are enough women in senior positions in technology. This may, of course, be contributing to the issue. If men are unaware that there's a problem, they don't see that there's anything to fix. A 2021 Harvard Business Review article describes how feedback provided to women tends to be less actionable and less useful for leadership progression than feedback given to men, making it less likely that women will advance to more senior positions. Imposter syndrome, 
preparing to fail, or also the glass cliff. Imposter syndrome is defined as a psychological pattern that causes chronic self-doubt and overwhelming feeling of inadequacy, often despite repeated successes and accomplishments. A report by the HubSpot showed a shocking 90% of women suffer from imposter syndrome. This can be particularly prominent for women in tech. One outcome of this is that tech workers overwork themselves due to competition and demanding workloads. A lack of certain employee benefits can also be a huge reason some women choose to leave their company. This can especially be the case in tech industry, as the majority of those in the tech industry are men, and so might not understand or appreciate why certain benefits may be a necessity for women. Flexible working, remote working, maternity leave and pregnancy loss policies are examples of employee benefits that can be particularly important to women. Flexible and remote working can help women for multiple reasons. For example, if they're going through menstruation or menopause, they may be more comfortable working from home, or if they're suffering badly, they may be better off taking time off when symptoms are bad and making up time later when they're feeling better. The company culture. It is not surprising that the company culture in a lot of tech companies are very male dominated. Women can feel in the outside at work due to their work environment being mostly men. There are a few experiences that stick in my mind related to this, but one in particular was when I was the only woman in the team uh, during a team building exercise, an escape game. We worked together to solve the puzzle and everything seemed to be going really well. And then when it came to time for the group photos, one of my colleagues found an adult magazine lying around, uh, decided it would be fun to open it at a particularly explicit page and include it in the group photo. None of my colleagues said anything, and I could only think of saying, really? I didn't mention it to anybody afterwards because I had no idea what to say and I had no idea if anyone would even take it seriously. Christy shares a story um, when she explained... Um, can, can you explain what <laughs> We've Christy lost said? our notes from the screen one yeah, second. I will go back. <laughs> that's a bug. It happens. That's why we have a job. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, talk amongst yourselves a second. There we go. Here's what Christy told us. Oh, it's an interview job. Yes, it was. And I don't have it in here because it's your part. OK, so <laughs> I will say it. So Christy was asked during an, uh, an interview session with a hiring person if she was in the process of gaining or losing weight. And uh, the guy took a picture of her just to show it to the team, just to make sure that she was pretty enough for the guys in the team. This happens, it's, this is real life examples of what happens. Um, if you're willing to share, could you raise your hand if you've had an experience that made you uncomfortable because of the male dominated culture the, in a company that you've worked for? Keep your hand up if it's happened more than once. More than five times? So many times that you've lost count? Thank you for sharing. Lack of female role models or mentors. The longer it takes to increase the number of women in tech-related jobs, the longer it will take to, for there to be a significant amount of female role models for the younger generation to look up to and have the desire to follow in their footsteps. Role models are important as they can be a powerful force for social learning and can help influence their decisions. They also play a large role in motivating people to achieve their goals as they can, say that, uh, they can see that it's possible. Low pay or uh, the gender pay gap. As we saw in the UK, the tech industry's gender pay gap is 16%, which is even higher than the national average. In particular, recent studies have shown that the largest gender pay gap in tech is in early careers, with women under 25 earning on average 29% less than males their age. Let's go back to the Barbie movie. <laughs> <laughs> Arriving at Venice Beach, Barbie starts to feel uncomfortable as she notices men staring at her. She punches a man for groping her, leading to her and Ken's brief arrest. Mattel's CEO is alerted that Barbie and Ken's presence and orders their recapture. Barbie tracks down her owner, a tween girl named Sasha, who criticizes her for encouraging unrealistic beauty standards. You've been making women feel bad about themselves since you were invented. 
Babi is shocked to realize that she didn't actually change the world through inspiring women to do anything, and to find out that unlike Barbie land, women don't run the real world. Unfortunately, as women out here in the world, in the real world, we are all too aware of that. For example, I've lost count of the number of times I've been spoken over in meetings, and I'm not alone in this. Many respondents to the 2023 Women in Tech survey reported feeling overlooked or ignored by the men in their company. One of them said, I am the only female manager in my company's management meetings, yet I am frequently spoken over, cut off, or not given the time to raise my concerns. Also, me personally heard twice in my career, we tried hiring a woman in that role and she was not good, so we won't, try, we won't hire a woman again. 20 years into my career as a DBA, my role on the project was the database expert. That's not a title I gave myself. Despite that and the fact that I was constantly given glowing reviews for my work, a male colleague from a different project was called into a meeting by the male project manager because they needed some database expertise. As a database expert, I know some things. If I don't know, I simply say it and look for the answer. I had a project manager who each time I said something about databases called, of course, in front of me, a colleague to double check. The colleague was embarrassed because he was less qualified than myself and he knew it. Barbie discovers that it was Sasha's mother, Gloria, a Mattel employee who inadvertently caused her existential crisis. Gloria was playing with Sasha's old Barbie toys whilst upset about her strained relationship with her daughter and began designing new Barbies, such as irrepressible thoughts of death Barbie and crippling shame Barbie. It was these thoughts that found their way into Barbie land. As we saw, a huge majority of women suffer from imposter syndrome, and this can be particularly prominent for women in tech. And, of course, we shouldn't blame them for experiencing in sports that syndrome. It's not their fault. A 2022 BBC Work Life article discusses the links between imposter, syn imposter syndrome and a high risk of burnout, and research that indicates ingrained biases and a lack of diversity can mean that underrepresented and ethnic minority groups are particularly affected. The Mattel executives attempt to put Barbie in a toy box for remanufacturing, but she escapes with Gloria and Sasha's help, and they travel to Babylon with the Mattel executives in the pursuit. Putting Barbie literally in a box to put her back in what the Mattel executives thought was her rightful place is a very clear metaphor for women being put in the box demanded of them by society. Even where girls and women aren't subjected to actual discrimination, they're continually bombarded by unhelpful gender stereotypes. When We'll be there all day if we try to cover our example of this. So let's just stick to a couple of that are specially, specifically career related. This is a career special that was sent to my kids a few years ago as part of their Petit Quotidien children's newspaper subscription. Just on the front page, we see a female dressmaker, a male fighter pilot, and a movie set where 10 out of 11 roles are illustrated as men. As you can imagine, it doesn't get better as you go through. And this is still on sale, educating our children. A few years ago, I was excited to hear that the BBC was airing a couple of episodes of a program called Girls Can Code as part of their Make It Digital season. What I wasn't expecting was to find myself shouting at the TV because A, there was no coding involved, and B, they chose things like jewelry, fashion, and makeup to show why tech could be exciting for girls. One way in which women are frequently stereotyped is by being assumed to be responsible for the majority of childcare. I was constantly asked about my family and family plans during job interview, which is totally illegal, of course. Questions were very direct. Do you plan to have kids? Do you have kids? How many? And so on. And what's worst is everyone knows, because I was specifically trained by my engineering school to have the correct answers to those questions. I was very lucky. I was only asked once in my 20s if and when I was planning to start a family during a job interview. On the, the, the other hand, I was frequently asked who was looking after the children when I was away on business trips. Meanwhile, during Barbie's capture and escape, Ken discovers the patriarchy and feels respected and powerful for the first time. People suddenly call him sir and ask for his advice or help. 
When Ken learns that he can't just walk his way into a job as a banker or doctor without any qualifications, he decides that if he can't participate in the patriarchy in the real world, he'll bring the philosophy back to Barbie land. Back in Barbie land, he ridiculates Barbie's dream house into his, uh, what he dubs his Mojo Dojo Kata house, and he persuades the other Kens to take over and turn Barbie land into his kingdom. The Barbies are indoctrinated into submissive roles, such as agreeable girlfriends, housewives, and, wife and maids. Barbie arrives home and is horrified. She tries and fails to convince everyone to return to the way things were and becomes depressed. Unfortunately, women in tech often experience sexism in the workplace. I was hired to a company that was particularly toxic. They had noticed something was wrong and decided out of the blue that adding a woman to the team would smooth things up. Guess what? It didn't work. So in this company, interns went very often to ask me questions. It was a very basic question, but as a database expert, I took the time to answer all of them until a colleague told me to stop because the interns were actually testing my skills. Back to the Barbie movie. Gloria decides to go into a very, very frustrating monologue about society's conflicting expectation of women raised cheers, uh, and this particular monologue raised cheers in cinemas all around the world. It is literally impossible to be a woman. You're so beautiful and so smart, and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough. Like we have to always be extraordinary, but somehow we're always doing it wrong. You have to be thin, but not too thin. You have to have money, but you can't ask for money because that's crass. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You have to be a career woman, but also always be looking out for other people. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not too pretty that you tempt them too much, or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be part of the sisterhood but always stand out and always be grateful. But never forget that the system is rich. So find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's too hard, it's too contradictory, and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. I'm just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us. In our tech roles, we often don't feel good enough. So we work harder, take on more responsibility, volunteer more, and end up burning out and being seen as weak or too emotional. <laughs> what? We love books. Okay. <laughs> Gloria's speech restores Barbie's self-confidence, and with the assistance of Sasha, Will Barbie, Alan, and the discontinued dolls, Gloria's speech deprograms the Barbies from their indoct indoctrination. We all, whatever our gender, need to unlearn our internalized sexism and stereotyped ideas. We can start by being aware of it, for example, by taking the implicit bias test mentioned earlier, and we will share the QR code for that later, and by challenging ourselves on it whenever we notice it. And there are things we can do as women to help reprogram ourselves. One example is to avoid taking on too much and becoming overwhelmed. I only recently learned about the four Ds of time management, and I think this is a great mantra. Delete, delegate, delay. Delete tasks that won't help you achieve your goals. Delegate tasks that can be handled by someone else. And delay or defer tasks that aren't urgent. And finally, the fourth D, actually do the urgent and important tasks on your list. Uh, I'm part of a women, well, several women in IT network, but in one of them, we created punch cards for each member so that when they reached 10 times they had said no in the workplace, they were entitled to cheers and an ice cream. <laughs> Let's help each other to reduce our workload here and now. You can either just have a thing, or, and you, you can just have a thing and make a mental note. What's something on your to-do list that can be deleted? How about something that can be delegated to someone else? What's one thing that you can delay because it's not as urgent or important as other things in your list? 
Fortunately, Ken's easily distracted by acting our war games with the other canes. So the Barbies are able to prevent the boys from enshrining male superiority into Barbieland's constitution, and they can take back Barbie land. There are some things we can do to help women to gain power. Allyship. The Cambridge Dictionary defines allyship as the quality of practice or helping or supporting other people who are part of a group that is treated badly or unfairly, although you are not yourself a member of this group. It goes on to say that allyship means using your power, position, or privilege to uplift others. Men in leadership positions can show allyship by advocating for gender equity or for a particular woman colleague. Mentorship. Both male, male and female mentors can help empower women in their careers. Advocacy. Allies can use their voice to make sure women are heard. For example, advocating for Karen in a meeting by saying something like, Karen had a good idea about that. She said... Amplification goes one better. An ally could encourage others to listen to the only woman in a meeting by saying something like, I'd love to hear what Sonia has to say about that. Finally, Barbie and Ken apologize to each other, acknowledges their mistakes. Barbie encourages Ken to find his own sense of purpose and a different identity without Barbie to be Ken of. Having now experienced systemic oppression for themselves, the Barbies resolve to rectify the faults of their previous society, emphasizing better treatment of the Kens and all outcasts. Still, when the Kens ask to be a part of the Supreme Court, the Barbies said no, but they can have a similar leadership role, the, the smaller leadership role. This is a historical message that women have been told so much. Although we still have a long way to go in our imperfect real world, things are gradually changing. Not so many years ago, pretty much all of the faces returned by a Google image search for software developer were men. When I did the same search last month, seven out of the first 24 faces, about 30%, appear to be women. There are some good initiatives in the Postgres community aimed at increasing diversity and inclusion. There's a PostgreSQL Code of Conduct, overseen by the PostgreSQL Code of Conduct Committee. There are three women on the COC, including the chair. The US PostgreSQL Association has a diversity committee with a mission to promote an inclusive environment in the PostgreSQL community through outreach programs and the support of educational endeavors for underrepresented PostgreSQL users in the United States. Some PostgreSQL conferences, for example, PG Day Paris, work to encourage as many women as possible to submit talks and to be a part of the organization and selection committees. The 2023 PG Day Paris organization team was all women, and the speaker lineup was 50% women. Other conferences, for example, this one, PG Conf EU, have made childcare available to encourage inclusivity. Postgres Women is a group without any legal existence that aims at encouraging and supporting women to become active members of the PostgreSQL community and fostering recognition of their contribution to PostgreSQL. The number of women speaking at Postgres conferences has increased significantly over the past 10 years. To create this chart, I've looked at... I'll check the chart, is there? Yes. I've, lo <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at information available on the websites of PostgreSQL community conferences across Europe. I've tried to identify the number of women speakers based on knowledge of the speakers or best guess of gender, since we don't actually ask speakers or participants to share their gender or other information that would help us to track how well we're doing in terms of representation. Other tech communities have educational programs aimed at encouraging girls and women to pursue careers in tech. In tech. A good example of this is Jungle Girls. Jungle Girls is a non-profit organization and a community that empowers and helps women to organize free, one-day programming workshops by providing tools, resources, and support. Unfortunately, some programs, although well-meaning, still don't get it right. Isabel Collet, a professor at the University of Geneva, recently shared on LinkedIn that she was invited to speak about girls in tech at an event in Paris. She noted that of the five people in the illustration advertising the event, four, including the instructor, are depicted as white males. A black girl appears to have been added as an afterthought, partially cut off the edge of the image. Then Gloria has an idea. Gloria wants to see an ordinary Barbie, a Barbie that 
reflects the, the everyday struggles of women. Ordinary Barbie isn't the president or an astronaut or a supermodel. She just wants a flattering top and to get through the day feeling kind of good about herself. The message that girls and women can do anything and be anything is supposed to be inspiring and empowering, but it causes so many of us to believe that we should always be aspiring to great things and that we need to do everything. I want no more role model, as it's too difficult to identify with a genius like Marie Curie, for example. Let's embrace being good enough and getting through the day feeling kind of good about ourselves. I've often said I'd like to work with more mediocre women. Of course, we don't necessarily aspire to having mediocre colleagues, but it would be nice if our fellow women in tech didn't always feel the need to excel, to shine, to stand out. It would be amazing if they, we, could just quietly get on with being ordinary. Obviously, Barbie's a Hollywood movie, so there's the usual schmaltzy, everything turned out perfectly ending. Barbie, still unsure of her own identity, meets with the spirit of Ruth Handler, Mattel co-founder and creator of the Barbie doll, who explains that Barbie's story has no set ending. Barbie decides she wants to become human and return to the real world, saying, I want to be a part of the people that make meaning, not the thing that is made. The Barbies, Ken's, and Mattel executives all wave her off and wish her well. How can we forge our own Hollywood ending? The authors of Women in Tech, The Best Bet to Solve Europe's Talent Shortage acknowledged that the level of representation of women in tech is a tough problem to solve. However, although there are no silver bullets, four interventions, redressing bias in the workforce, improving retention rates, reskilling women into tech roles, and bolstering girls in STEM classes earlier in their educational process can have a significant impact. Even if we don't have all the answers, now that you are aware of some of the reasons that girls and women turn their back on STEM subjects and some of the reasons that women are leaving their tech roles, we can all make sure we have conversations about those things and start finding ways to remove those, some of these barriers. We saw some of the reasons that girls turn their back on STEM subjects. Girls get less support than boys for pursuing STEM careers. Even if you're not a parent or teacher, there are things you can do to support and encourage girls who are interested in pursuing tech careers. Maybe you could create or support an organization that encourages girls to consider a tech career. I enjoy helping Rights Tech Women, for example, an organization based in Geneva that runs robotics and coding workshops for girls. Girls are told they are not good at STEM. I hope that teachers will gradually become aware of and work to challenge their implicit bias. If we want girls to consider careers in tech, we need them to believe in their ability in STEM subjects. Women ICT students feel isolated. Building a sense of community, a sisterhood through initiatives such as women in technology groups could reduce feelings of isolation for women ICT students and help them to feel supported, included and safe. And we saw some of the reasons that women leave their tech roles. Few opportunities for progression. We saw that many men believe there are already enough women in senior position in technology, even though women are still very much in the minority in these roles. Raising awareness that there's a problem will mean that people are more inclined to find ways to fix it. The author of the 2021 Harvard Business Review article mentioned earlier offers strategy for managers to overcome their own, often unconscious, gender biases and help both their male and female reports achieve their leadership potential. Imposter syndrome. Workers who are provided with regular positive and helpful feedback, who feel able to discuss their challenges in an open environment and who have ready access to coaching and mentoring may find that imposter syndrome is lessened. Lack of certain employee benefits. Organizations that offer benefits such as flexible working, remote working, maternity leave, and pregnancy loss policies may find themselves more able to retain their workforce. Having a diverse group of people discussing benefits may help with understanding which benefits are particularly impactful to women. The company culture. Being aware that the company culture in a lot of tech companies is very male-dominated and making an effort to make women feel welcome, comfortable and included can go a long way. 
Lack of female role models or mentors. Female role models are important, especially for younger generations to aspire to. We can all take the time to share the accomplishments of the many amazing women in tech and to amplify their voices to make them more visible. As women in tech, we can offer our services as mentors to encourage others to follow in our footsteps. We can encourage more women to speak at conferences and encourage conference organizers to challenge their unconscious gender bias when selecting a lineup so that more women are on stage sharing their experiences and expertise. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the gender pay gap. Thank you. The gender pay gap is a complex issue, and it's not one that we're going to fix quickly. But let's least encourage open discussions around salary so that people are aware of the differences and know that there's a problem to fix. Careers coaches or agents could be a useful tool here for, to help women to know and to believe in their own worth and to identify and achieve their career and salary goals. Things aren't always easy for women in Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House. As we've seen, women are underrepresented in tech. Women leave the tech industry Women in tech experience giant bias or discrimination in the workplace, and women in tech are paid less than their male counterparts. Maybe we can't aspire to every day being the best day ever, but there are things we can do to help make the tech landscape a bit better every day for women and for all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to thank you. <laughs> We'd like to share that this is a uh, Karen did a very exemplary, <laughs> terrific work. I work at uh, documenting everything. So you will find at the end of the slide all the sources we have with links. So you can. We are not making things up. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, we do have a lot of sources. <laughs> and this is the QR code to the um, um, bias tests. So I encourage you to take it because, well, you might already be aware that you're biased, but uh, there is no such thing as a human being not being biased. And to finish, we'd like to um, encourage all women here to come on stage with us to have a group photo.